Hey, what's up, you guys? How's it going? I uh, just wanted to uh, share with you something that I think will be incredibly helpful for all of the uncertainty and everything that's happening right now. And I think this is a an appropriate conversation, regardless of whether you are a you know stay at home mom, you're a business owner, you're a you know work for somebody else, like whatever it is. These are really important beliefs, and um, and one of the reasons that beliefs are so important is because um, beliefs dictate actions and actions dictate results. And so if you really want to get to the root of how you get better results, then you've got to understand how to install new beliefs for yourself. I remember learning a long time ago, this quote that made a huge impact for me. And it said that the world you live in is shaped by the beliefs that you have. And if you change your beliefs, you will change your world. And at the time I was like, man, I don't even know what that means, but it sounds so cool. <laughs> like I need to figure this out. And right now we're obviously in a time of um, extreme uncertainty and there's like all sorts of, you know, you know, different perspectives and polarizing things happening and everything else like that. And so I want to share with you guys three, three important beliefs that you can adopt right now that'll make a huge difference um, in your, in your peace of mind in your well-being, in your ability to stay focused, get things done, in your ability to grow your business, even in the midst of all this and the ability to protect your business. Hey, David, what's going on? Um, and so the first, the first belief that I want to share with you guys is, uh, is this, I must focus on what I can control. Okay. There's, there's so much going on um, at any given point that you can't control that when you focus on what you can't control, like you just completely give away your access to power. Um, and I'll, I'll share a story with you guys. So some of you guys know uh, a couple months ago in December, I went on a ski trip. I absolutely love skiing. It's like one of my favorite things in the world to do. Just kind of like clears my mind, resets me, gets me in a better frame of mind. And, uh, and I bought new skis and I was doing like the snow dance and I couldn't, I could not wait to get, uh, to get on the mountain. And the hardest decision I had to choose that day was which of my new pairs of skis was I going to use. And so I picked the pair that I wanted, had an incredible morning, just like best skiing morning of my life and took a lunch break, went up after lunch, very first run after lunch. I'm kind of like adjusting my helmet and my wrist straps and everything, go over this tiny little lip. It's not even a big deal. And my, my right ski gets caught on the edge, gets caught on the snow and I keep moving forward, my entire leg twists, feel a big pop inside of my knee. And I was like, oh man, you know, was that like, was that an ACL? Like, what was that? Cause an ACL is a pretty common ski injury. So here I am, my knee starts feeling really weird. I, my skis never popped off. I try to stand up, can't stand up. My knee buckled underneath me. And in that moment, I knew obviously my day of skiing was over but probably the season. And now I'm lying on a mountain with no ability to get myself down. And I have a choice, right? I have a choice. Do I focus on what I can't control or do I focus on what I can control? And in that moment, there was not a lot that I could control, but the one thing that I could absolutely control was my attitude, right? I, I have complete domain over my attitude. And so I looked up at the sky, I was lying on my back, waiting for the ski patrol to come get me. Looked up at the sky, took a big deep breath, and I just made a commitment to myself that I am not going to be upset about this. So, long story short, I did tear my ACL, completely ruptured, did a whole bunch of other things, tore my LCL, my meniscus, bone contusions, like all these different things, it was a mess. And I wound up having surgery four weeks ago, and thank God I'm doing great. I'm already walking and doing, you know, light body weight squats and everything. But the point of this is that there's always going to be a ton of things that you can't control and you need to focus on what you can control. This, this is known, um, this is known as your locus of control. Like where do I place my center of control? Do I place my center of control outside of me? You know, like, okay, so there's all these things happening. You know, there's, there's losses in the stock market. There's people getting sick. There's all these things that are going on right now. Of course, all of that is unfortunate, but I can't control that. So the more time that I spend focusing on things that I can't control, the more powerless I become. And the more powerless I become, the worse I feel. And then the more I focus on those things, 
that I can't control. And so this is the time to take back your control. Take back what you can control, right? One thing that you can constantly focus on that makes an, an enormous improvement, no matter who you are, where you are, what's happening, is the practice of gratitude, right? Practice what you're grateful for. Like, what am I grateful for right now? Well, right now I'm grateful that I'm not sick. I'm grateful that I have the ability to control my attitude. I'm grateful that I can talk to you guys. I'm grateful that I have food. I'm grateful for all of these different things. The more that you stay focused on those things, the better off you're going to be. Um, you, you've probably seen some of the videos coming out of Italy right now. Those people are in a tough spot, right? Everybody's in a tough spot right now. Some of those people are out on their balconies singing and dancing and playing music and doing all these things. They're focusing on what they can control. They're like, I can go out and I can sing. I can go out and I can dance. I can go out and I can have a good time even while I'm on quarantine, right? Is it ideal? Of course not. But it's better than being stuck inside on, you know, watching the news and watching all these reports and things like that. Obviously, you want to stay informed. But, but if you're constantly just glued to this stuff that you can't control, like what are you actually going to do? So the second belief um, that you must adopt right now is, uh, is something that I've been learning for the last several years, and it's been, uh, it's been life-changing for me. And one of, the, one of the people that really helped me learn this is a coach that I work with who's worked with elite athletes, you know, Cy Young winning baseball players, like the, the best of the absolute best. And we've been focused on mental toughness. And, uh, and there's, there's two kinds of things that you can, you can focus on in terms of goals, right? You can focus on what is the result that I want to create? And you can also focus on what is the process that I need to do in order to create those results, right? So you've got result goals and you've got process goals. And in order for you to maintain your own uh, sense, of, sense of purpose and sense of control, you must lean into your processes. And right now, all of our habits and our, and our routines and, and absolutely everything are totally thrown in upheaval, right? They're changing left and right. And we're like, man, you know, yesterday I was able to go to work. Today, I can't go to work. Yesterday, the kids were able to go to school. Today, they can't go to school, right? Yesterday, we were able to travel. Today, we're not going to travel, right? All these different things are changing. And so it's important that we create structures for ourselves, but that those structures have dynamic flexibility, allowing for certain changes to take place so that we can still maintain a structure, right? We can still focus on what we can control while allowing for things to change. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So with the, uh, the ACL situation that I talked to you guys about just a couple minutes ago, one of, the, one of the processes that I had in place before that injury was that I was you know, doing five workouts a week, right? I was doing you know, upper body, lower body, cardio, like all that sort of thing. Now, I have a, a major injury in my leg. I'm not able to do lower body workouts, but what can I do, right? I started focusing on what can I do, right? So I was still able to do upper body. I was still miraculously able to do the stationary bike. I was still able to go for walks. There were things that I could do. So I still maintained my process, even though I reinvented and adapted certain parts of those process. And the thing about these process goals and the thing about uh, having habits and routines is that they should not just be there for when times are good. In fact, the, the most mentally tough people in the world lean into their processes in times of adversity, right? Something happens, I'm going to lean harder into my process. Something happens, I'm going to keep leaning into that process. And that enables us to maintain control and focus on what we can do. So what's your process right now? If you don't have a process, right? And, and you're just kind of, you know, figuring out what to do and trying to understand things, that's totally understandable, but you want to create a simple process for yourself as soon as possible. Maybe you're not going into the office anymore. Great. What's your new wake up time going to look like? What's your new morning routine going to look like? Is it going to be adapted? Of course it's going to be adapted, but the more intensely you lean into that process, the better off you're going to be, because this is a time where you need to focus on being at your best for you and for everybody else around you. Like we're counting on you too, right? In order for everybody else to count on you, you need to be at your best. And so one of the things that really, really 
creates rig rigidity in process is that we, we come up with this all or nothing attitude, right? If I had said, okay, you know what? I tore my ACL. Now I just can't work out, right? It's like all or nothing. I can completely do the workout or I can't, I can't do anything at all, right? It kind of sounds ridiculous when you say it, but that's the kind of thinking that gets us into trouble is this all or nothing thinking. And that's what creates rigid structures that don't last. We need dynamic structures with flexibility that, okay, you know what? One of my core pillars is I'm going to take care of my health. I'm going to take care of my fitness. Great. What does that look like? It looks different depending on what you can and you can't do. This is the time to lean into process. Are we all going through adversity? A hundred percent, right? Do, is this the time for us to back off of the things that actually cause us to be at our best? Absolutely not. This is the time for us to dig in and go harder with more intensity and attack those processes so that we can continue to show up at our best and we can even make progress and cover ground in this time period that we're all going through. So that's belief number two. I must lean into process. Belief number three, this is especially important for um, for, for entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out how this all is going to impact their business. But I think this is important for everybody to understand. Belief number three is that I must grow and expand by adding value to other people. This is how we grow. We add value to other people, right? There's a lot of things changing in the world right now. And there's going to be, who knows how, all, how long all of this is going to last. Like, I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows right now. But what we do know that will never change is that the more value you add to other people, the more in demand you will be and the better off you will be able to make the world around you. Constantly, you should be looking at like, what can I do? There's a lot of things that we can't do right now. Forget about those things. It's not important for those things to occupy your mind. What's important right now is what can I do? Who can I help? How can I help? Where can I help? Where can I add value? You need to ask solution-based questions, not think about all of the problems. The more problem-focused you are right now, the less likely it's going to be that you make progress and that you can be one of those people who are contributing and helping everybody else around you. Now, I understand because uh, I understand that in, in installing these new beliefs is not something that's going to happen overnight. But if, if you don't start doing it right now, like when would be a better time to do it? We have an extreme opportunity right now to focus on becoming stronger, focus on becoming better, focus on helping those around us, focus on being inspirational, on being the type of person that we wish the world had more of, right? This is the time for us to implement and install these beliefs. So again, the three beliefs that we covered today, one, I must focus on what I can't control. Two, I must lean into the processes that enable me to be at my best. And three, I must grow and expand by adding value to other people. If you change your beliefs, if you adopt these three beliefs, you will show up stronger, you will be more valuable, you will be more resilient, and as everything plays out, you will be the type of person that people are drawn to and the type of person that opportunities will magnetize to. So this is what I want to share with you guys today. I hope this has been valuable. I'd love to know. Leave some comments in the uh, leave some comments here. What beliefs are you adopting right now to make sure that you're at your best, that you can contribute, that you can make sure that this opportunity that we're all experiencing, this challenge, does not go unmet. I'd love to hear what you guys are doing right now. I'm here for you, and I'll talk to you soon. Later.